and you watch it online. <laughs> we're in Luke uh, chapter number eight, uh, and we're in verse number 49. I'm reading from the English Standard Version today. And I want to say this again today because I got another message this week about oh, what version of the Bible is the best one to read. And my answer to that is whichever one you read, right? Because if you ain't reading it, it doesn't count anyway, right? So some people might be like, yeah, I, I, I was raised on the King James Version. If you don't read the King James Version, okay, find another one you can read, okay? Because the Bible says faith cometh by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. So find it and read it. Somebody say amen. amen. While he was still speaking, Luke 8. 49, he being Jesus, speaking to her, a messenger arrived from the house of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. He told them, your daughter is dead. There's no use troubling the teacher now. But when Jesus heard what had happened, he said to Jairus, do not be afraid, just have faith and she will be healed. When they arrived at the house, Jesus wouldn't let anybody go in except Peter, John, James, and the little girl's mother and father. The house was filled with people weeping and wailing, but he said, stop the weeping. She is not dead. She is only asleep. But the crowd laughed at him because they knew that she had died. Then Jesus took her by the hand and said in a loud voice, my child, get up. If you're reading the King James Version, you might say, tell him Kuma, which interprets my child, come up, uh, get up. And at that moment in her life, it, at that moment, life returned. And she immediately stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were overwhelmed, but Jesus insisted that they not tell anyone what not what had happened. Yeah, no, that was right. Oh, so that's where we get that from the Bible. What had happened was. Uh, so what I want you to do is I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is the message for today. It is not over yet. Turn to the other neighbor and say, other neighbor. You are not my first choice. Not my first choice. God wants me to tell you. It is not over yet. Hallelujah. Let's pray. God, we're, we're thankful that you have a word for us today. We're thankful that when we come here, we can worship you and praise you and liberty and freedom can be here. We thank you that where your spirit is there is there. But I pray that the word that we speak now would speak to the hearts and minds and spirits of the men and women that are in this building and the ones that are watching online. Give them what they need and let them know that you are here for them. In Jesus' name I pray. Everybody who believes it says, Amen. The Bible says that Jairus is a teacher in, uh, is a leader in the synagogue. And let me give you a little backdrop here. That's kind of a big deal. Because essentially what that means is Jesus was on one side and Jairus was on another, right? We have to remember when Jesus stepped on the scene, people did not mess with him, okay? People thought he was a weirdo. Who was this weirdo people were following, right? Uh, uh, and, and people uh, took issue with him. Matter of fact, the Bible says almost essentially that Jairus was a Pharisee. And a Pharisee was a religious person uh, who was a, uh, in opposition of Jesus, okay? So not only did he have issues with Jesus, but he did not believe that Jesus was everything he said he was. He was in charge of the synagogue, so he was essentially, imagine like a campus pastor who's in charge of making sure everything gets set up and everything is done on a regular basis. And we know that these guys were on opposite sides, as Jesus because there's another story of a man named Nicodemus and Nicodemus came to Jesus but the difference between Jairus and Nicodemus is Nicodemus came at night 
Because, see, you, you thought you thought that creeping is something that we just start doing now, okay? <laughs> They've been doing that for a long time, TLC, so I creep. So he creeped out of his house in the middle of the night because he wanted to receive something for G from Jesus, but he knew if people saw him, he would essentially lose his job and his reputation. But J. Iris is in a different situation, and he says, I don't care who's going to see me go to Jesus. I don't care if I lose my job. I don't care if I lose popularity. I don't care if people turn their backs on me. I need something from Jesus and nothing is going to stop me. There reaches a point in your life where you have to make up in your mind, no matter what comes and no matter what goes, I'm going to get to Jesus. There, sometimes there are moments in your life where you hear some news at your office and you say, I gotta get up from this cubicle and I gotta go to the bathroom and I gotta, or I gotta go to my car or I gotta find a way to open up my mouth and talk to God because yes, I'm on the clock, but I need a 15 minute break, not a smoke break, so I can get in touch with Jesus. There are times where you got people over your house and you get a text message and you're like, oh my goodness. And you say, y'all, finish watching the rest of uh, Ozark later, okay? Y'all got y'all don't gotta go home. Come on, Marty Mar. But you gotta get up out of here because I've got to get in touch with Jesus, and I know that it may be inconvenient for our relationship right now. But most importantly, I have something that I need to say to him, and I don't want there to be a disruption. So what happens is J. Iris comes to Jesus. And if you look at verse number, where are we at here? At verse number 29, it says, while he was still speaking to her. I don't have time to get into all of this, but essentially what happens is, J. Iris comes to Jesus and he says, I need you now. And Jesus begins to go with J. Iris. And he's walking to J. Iris' house. And there's a woman with the issue of blood. Okay, I can't get into all of it right now. But on the way to do one miracle, something about this lady pulls on Jesus and he stops in the middle of one miracle to give her one. And I don't know about you this morning, but that's half the reason why I came out to the house of the Lord this morning. Because I see other people being blessed and I say, God, I need some of that right there. Right? I see what is happening in other people's lives and I need that to happen in my life. It doesn't have to happen in my life immediately, but I just need to know that you're around. Okay, some of y'all, you're looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. In my neighborhood, maybe you don't know nothing about this, but you would be, we used to play outside and eventually while you were playing outside, especially in the summer, you begin to hear this bell digging and sounds and all that jazz. And you, you as a kid, you say, hold on one second, is that the ice cream? Okay, and the ice cream truck was not coming to my house. I lived at 1407 Hall Kirk. The ice cream truck was not coming to 1407 Hall Kirk. He was just coming down the street. But I knew that if he was in my neighborhood, there was an opportunity for me to get something from the truck. I knew because he was on my block, there was an opportunity for me to get something that I didn't have. And when we come into the house of God and we see God is blessing and God is opening up doors and God is making ways, we should be doing cartwheels even before it comes our way. Because if God is blessing your neighbor, it means he's in the neighborhood. If God is doing miracles in the life of your children and your brother and your sister, you should be blessing because you know God is still in the blessing business. If people are getting promotions on the job, we shouldn't be mad. We should be like, I'm happy for you, but you got to get ready to be happy for me because I got next. Because God has more than enough abundance, so he reaches out and he heals this lady. Uh, and in the middle of that, while he's still finishing that up, the Bible says a messenger comes from the house of J. Iris and told him, your daughter is dead. And he said, there's no need in troubling the teacher. Let's pause here. First of all, many of us love, serve, magnify Jesus, and we have many names for him, savior or titles, Lord, King of Kings, Alpha and Omega, uh, uh, God Almighty, right? But typically, people who serve Jesus do not call him teacher because he's more than that. But Jairus said, I don't know who you really are, 
So I'm going to call you what I know you to be, and I'm going to call you a teacher. Now check it. Technically speaking, it's not a lie to call Jesus a teacher. It's just a limitation. He is a teacher, but he's more than that. And notice, Jesus is not offended by him calling him a teacher. He still goes to his house. He still does a miracle. He still makes a way in the life of this young man, even though it is a limitation, but it's not a lie. And can I tell you, that is what's happening in your life. People see you, and they do not acknowledge everything they see. It's not a lie that they still see that little girl, because that little girl is in there, but there's more than that little girl. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I know that when you see me, you see somebody who used to do this, and used to do that, and used to go here, and used to go there, and used to have this going on, and used to have that going on. Yes, I am that person, but there is more to me than that, okay? I cannot be defined by the biggest mistake that I've made in my life. Because yes, I made a mistake. Is it a lie that I made a mistake? No, but it's a limitation because I am not a mistake. Uh-huh. Yes, if you cut me off in traffic, I might go off on you. Uh-huh. All right? But I am more than somebody that goes off. Yes, I am impatient. And yes, I get jealous. And yes, I say things that I have no business saying. None of those things are a lie about me. That is just a limitation of who I am. Uh-huh. So let me set you free this morning of having to feel like you are responsible to explain yourself to people who don't want to receive the information. Somebody, you can get your keys and you can go home right now because that's all you needed to hear. Jesus says, I know who I am. I know what I'm called to do. I know what I'm called to be. I know who I am. So what you have to say about me does not impact my knowledge of myself. Because your view lets me know that yes, it's what you see, but I am more than what you see. I am more than what you think about me. I am more, this is why when people say negative things about you, you and I have to say, listen, I'm not gonna go here and try to explain something. Because when people have negative things to say about you, they have made up in their mind, they would rather believe their version of the truth than the whole truth. Jesus says, you call me teacher, you can call me whatever you want, but when I do this miracle in your life, the narrative will change. And when God is using you, people might start out calling you this, and they'll change their mind. They may start calling you this in one way, and then later on, they will change the story. The Bible says in chapter, excuse me, verse number 50, it says, when Jesus heard what was happening, that he said to Jairus, do not be afraid. Now this is, this is something, this is something very interesting here. Because the Bible says that the people came to Jairus to tell Jairus that his daughter was dead. They weren't talking to Jesus. But Jesus overheard what they said. And as a result of that, Jesus said, you know what? A few verses later, he said, she's not dead. She's sleeping, right? In other words, Jesus understood that there has to be a time when I need something in my life that ignoring people is the appropriate response. Uh-huh. Because the Bible says here in the original Greek uh, language here, and if you have, uh, if you like go to uh, the Bible app in your phone and you go to the English Standard Version, I think it's in the New Living Translation Version, and I believe it's in the King James Version, you'll see like three dots next to that word, and if you click it, it's going to say ignoring. I know, that messed up some of y'all's theology. You like Jesus to be ignoring people? Yes, he does, and you need to too. Uh-huh. Jesus says, there are some people in this world that I say, in this moment, I don't have time for that. Uh-huh. And one of the reasons why you and I are stressed the way we are is because we're stressing about things that do not concern us. We more worried about their problems than they is. You trying to come up for solutions for their problems and they don't, they're not even trying to figure it out. God says there is some things or some moments, some scenarios in your life where you have to press ignore. Uh-huh. And you might be like, oh, well, that's hard for me. No, it's not hard for you. Because some of us have been doing it all week long. When you say that, see that scam likely appear on your phone. What do you hear? Decline. When you see that uh, 
that ex call you, what do you hit? Decline, okay? When you see that bill collector that you still owe money to today, call, you say decline. Yeah, I don't got your money, so stop calling me, right? And Jesus says, this is the same thing we need to do when the devil tries to put thoughts in our minds. Yeah. We need to say, I understand that that's what you believe, but I'm going to decline the thought to believe that. I understand that you think that I'm going to be defined by what happened to me, but I'm going to decline that thought. I understand that you think I'm always going to struggle like I struggle right now, but I'm going to decline that thought. Have you ever had somebody, don't raise your hand, who keep calling and they don't get the point? So you got to decline multiple times in one minute. Okay, some of y'all are like, I can't say nothing because I'm the person that be calling, but that's okay. You're welcome here as well. But uh, eventually, you just decline, 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 because you're like, I want you to get the message. I ain't talking to you today. And that's what we need to do when the enemy tries to bring up things in our lives. Somebody call me right now. When the enemy tries to bring up things in our lives, when he tries to make us believe something that we know, know is not true, we need to say, I decline that. Uh, I, I, don't, that I don't have to believe that because you believe that. I don't have to believe that the best is behind me because you believe that. I don't have to believe that my kid has to always struggle with what they struggle with because you believe that. I don't have to believe that I'm not going to be able to make it just because you don't believe I have, I'm not going to be able to be. I don't have to believe that the rest of my life is going to be fine, defined by this thing because if Jesus ignores somebody, he is anointing me to ignore somebody. I, and I wish I had some blessed oil because I was throwing in this audience here today because... If you are going to be on assignment, you have to know what to ignore. Uh-huh. You can't respond. Okay, I just had a birthday, April the 19th. I don't remember how many comments I had, okay? But, you know, God bless the people that respond to every comment on your birthday. God bless you. You are an anointed person, okay? But there are some of us that say, I can't respond to everyone. But I can put an overall message at the end of all the comments and say, thank you. Thank you for all the, because you're saying, I cannot have time for this right now. It's not the best use of my time. And I'm giving you permission this week to ignore some things. I'm giving you authorization to ignore some things. And many of us have spent so much time defending and explaining that when it comes time to do what we need to do, we're exhausted because we spent all of our energy trying to explain who I am and what I really meant. Okay? So Jesus says, listen, I heard what you said, but I don't believe that. Here's another thing that I want to pull out real quick here. The Bible says that when Jesus gets there, he says, stop the weeping. Whew, she isn't dead. Can I tell you? You do not have to keep suffering with the pain that you've been suffering with because Jesus steps on the scene and he says, stop weeping. He does not say you don't have anything to cry about. He doesn't say it didn't hurt. He did not say it's not painful. He said, stop weeping. And what, why he said stop weeping is because he wanted them to know that I'm getting ready to do something in your life or your future. But in this moment, you've got to wipe the tears away from your eyes and get ready to receive something that's different. So he says, stop weeping. And then he says, she ain't dead. <laughs> the messenger comes in verse 29 and he says, your daughter is dead. And Jesus says in verse number 51, he said, she ain't dead. He says, she what? She's sleeping. Okay. And some of y'all know exactly how that is, okay? Because some of y'all sleep so hard, sleep through the alarm clock. Come on, sleep through multiple alarms. You set multiple alarms for yourself and you still don't wake up. <laughs> some of y'all be dead to the world. And then there's some of us that we hear a noise in the middle of the night when we're waking up, right? Uh, but the Bible says that she was not dead. She was asleep. So what do we have here? The people say she's dead, but God says she's asleep. God is not crazy. Jesus is not crazy. But he says, I see more than what you see. I see beyond what you can see. To them, they're talking about the same girl. To them, they're saying, this girl is dead. And Jesus is saying, I do not see that way. Mm -hmm. They're saying, it is over for this girl. And Jesus is saying, she is just taking a nap. Yeah. 
saying, bury her. And Jesus is saying, wake her up. Come on, God. Have your way. They're saying, it is done, okay? Put her in the ground. And God is saying, not yet. Yeah. And this is what happens in our life. These are the power of words. How will you define yeah. Yeah. what is happening to you? How will you define what is happening to your heart? How will you define what is happening to your mind? How will you define what's happening to your spirit? How will you define what's happening to your family? Because you get the opportunity to name it. God says, she ain't dead. She is asleep. And God wanted to remind you that the relationship is not dead. It just might be on pause. Uh-huh. The blessing is not dead. It might be on pause. The miracle isn't dead. It just might be on pause. The way is not dead. It just might be on pause. Yes, you may not have gotten a house yet. That don't mean the deal is dead. It's just on pause. Uh-huh. There's some people in here looking at me right now, and you thought the business idea was dead. It's not dead. It's just on pause. And then the Bible says Jesus finally gets to Jairus' house. And the first thing Jesus does is he says, get out. Yep. <laughs> uh-huh. Jesus, don't say, hey, how you doing? My name's Jesus. <laughs> I'm here. You know, like when you're in the doctor's office, they come in, they say their name, and you're a bedside man. Jesus doesn't explain who he is. He says, <clears throat> get out. <laughs> Clear the room. Uh-huh. He he does uh, uh Jose go go back there to that life for me, man, all the way. Okay, if you grew up in church, uh like I grew up in church, when it was time for everybody to get out the sanctuary, when it was time for everybody to go home, they did not make no announcement. They started clicking them like click their light on, on and off. Yep. Yeah? Uh-huh. Click them on again. <laughs> Do it a couple more times. Do it a couple more times. That's how they let you know. It's time for us to clean this church. You got to get up out of here. Do it a couple more times. They're saying, I know you talking. Y'all keep kidding. Do it in the parking lot. Okay? All right. Do it one more time, Jose. And then you can come in your seat. And Jesus says, listen, you have to get out of here. And why does Jesus clear out the room? Because he says, I am clearing out the room not for what's happening now, but for what I'm getting ready to do. And there have been some separations in your life. Yeah that you blame the devil for that God did. Ooh. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> there have been some exits in your life that you was blaming on the devil. And God said, that ain't the devil. That's me. Maybe the relationship ended because God said, I have to end it now so it doesn't stop you from what's next. Maybe you're by yourself. Because God says, I cannot allow anybody to contaminate what I'm trying to do in your life. Maybe you are divorced right now and you blamed it on the devil. And God said, I just had to bring about some separation. Maybe it's over. Now, here's what I want to point out for, for a pause here. It's important for me to say this. God kicked everybody out, but that don't mean they stayed out forever. Right? Because some of us do people like that. Some of us, you know, you make one mistake and you're like, we ain't friends no more. Ever again. Now, wait a second. Just take a week and think about it, okay? He doesn't kick them out the house and say they ain't welcome no more, but that's what some of us do. Oh, you didn't come to my party. You ain't my friend no more. I'm deleting you on my phone. Don't call me. Don't say happy birthday to my kids. I'm deleting you off of Facebook. I'm taking all the pictures out. Don't drive by my house no more. No, my kid cannot come over to your house. No, because we say, you did something wrong to me, so the relationship is over. Jesus said, I'm not doing that, right? I just need you to get out now. I just need you to move along now because what I'm getting ready to do is something that uh, you cannot receive in this moment. And sometimes the separation or the breakup or the disconnection or being eliminated from your job or being laid off from your job or being lonely is not punishment for uh, a mistake. Sometimes they have to get out and they have to leave in preparation for a miracle. Sometimes I've got to answer the call, not because I hate you, but because I've got to prepare for the miracle. Have you ever had to study in high school, come on for the exam, 
and you turn your phone on do not disturb? Have you ever had to study for a test and you turn your phone on do not disturb? It's not because I don't love my friends. It's just I've got to dig into something right now and I've got to put those things on pause and I've got to clear the room. Uh-huh. And God wanted me to tell you, some of us are like, Lord, why is my phone drier than it's ever been? Drier than a, a box of frosted flakes. Come on. Why is it like that? And God said, I'm not punishing you. I'm not taking people from your life. I'm making a room. I'm not eliminating people from your life. I'm making a room for the ones that need to be here. When we came here, this room was filled with games and board games, all that just The first thing we had to do before we set up the chairs, we had to clean the room. Before we set up the speakers, we had to clear the room because nothing can happen until the room is clear. And what happens here is Jesus comes here and he steps on the scene and he says, clear the room because in this room, I only need believers. And one of the things that God is doing in your life at this moment is he's trying to connect you to more believers. You've been connected to people that have been doubting you for too long. You've been trying to convince people, no, it's going to work this time for too long. And God says, I'm trying to connect you with people not only that believe in you, but that believe in me. Right. Uh -huh. Because if you believe in God, you believe all things are possible. Uh -huh. And God is trying to connect you with, uh, that. that's why, you know, if you know somebody here, yeah, go out to eat, connect, do some coffee, connect, because you're not, I don't need something to me and like, Alan, help me to understand where my life is going. You know, pray and have God get back to me. And I'm like, I don't need to pray to tell you where your life is going. <laughs> Give me your phone. I can tell by who you're talking to where your life is going. I can tell by who you're texting where your life is going. I can tell how much usage time you spend on social media versus the Bible app. Oh, man, somebody almost threw a chair at me for saying that. But the truth of the matter is, you do not need a telescope to see where you are. Whatever you are investing your time in the most is where you're going. Uh -huh. That's why some of us uh, have had to isolate ourselves because we're praying now more than we've ever prayed. Not because I'm stuck up, but because God is preparing me. I, I'm, I'm not acting funny with you. I'm just getting ready to receive my destiny. I don't hate you. I just love God. And he's telling me I've got to prepare because something is getting ready to break. Something that was dead is getting ready to come alive. Something that was hurt is getting ready to be healed. They told me that I couldn't do it, but by connecting with God, God, he's getting ready to do it through me. I believe that there is something happening. There is a shaking in your life in this moment. There is rumbling in your life in this moment. There have been tears in your life this week because God says you've got to be ready to let go of what was so you can receive what is. And Jesus is the best person to do this because he goes, I'm going to have to pick up next week because i gotta, I got to end. But he goes into the girl's room and he grabs her by the hand because he wants her to know you're not alone anymore. Uh-huh. And why is Jesus able to bring somebody back from the dead? I know this sounds like a crazy story. It's like this just seems like it's impossible. But one of the reasons why Jesus had authorization to bring her back from the dead is because he had power over death. Uh huh. And you and I have to be careful who we listen to because some of us are, you know, we're living in an age where, you know, people watch one, two, one YouTube video and now they're an expert. You, you, you doing taxes? You know what I'm saying? You a tax expert? You don't even know how to do math. How you a tax expert? Come on. You, you a tax expert? And you, you know, you don't, even, you don't got your pen ready, you don't got your paper ready, you don't got no computer. You know what I'm saying? You're saying, you know what? And people are doing the same thing in the church. They're saying, I'm anointed by God and I got a word of, of, of God for, for you. Before I listen to what you have to say about what God told me about you, what did he tell me? What did he tell you about you? Right? Because just because you've got something to say or because you heard something, don't mean it was God. Sometimes people say they got a word for you from God, and that ain't God. That's Taco Bell. Right? Uh, 
but the Bible says that he comes and he lays his hand on her before he speaks to her because he wants her to know you are not here alone. You're not in this alone. You have not been by yourself. You are not in this isolated. I am here with you. And then he speaks the word. And what I love is he says, my child, get up. This is something that she probably heard many mornings when it was time to get up. This is something her dad or her mother probably said to her multiple times. He said, get up. He did not say come back from the dead. He said, get up. Because God had the ability, Jesus had the ability to speak to her in a dead situation because he had power over death. And the reason why God can tell you that the best of the rest of your days are going to be the best of your days is because you have not been in the future, but he has. One of the reasons why God can tell you you will be healed is because he took the stripes on his back and he says, by my stripes, you are healed. The one of the reasons why God can tell you that your family will get through what they're going through is because Jesus said my family went through something like this before. The reason why God can tell you that your son or your daughter or your relative or your brother or sister won't be locked up in jail for the rest of their days is because God says, I've had some people that were locked up in jails too and I got them out. And I can do the same for you. The way it starts does not have to be the way that it ends. And the reason that is is because God is here. That's why, that's why this week I'm challenging everyone. I'm challenging every man, boy, and girl, from the oldest to the youngest. If you've got a phone, this week, starting this week, starting tomorrow, we uh, are doing a Bible reading plan in the book of Mark. Okay? So if you're not friends on the YouVersion Bible app, go do that today. Okay? Because we're going to send out that Bible plan tomorrow. And you might be saying, Alan, I got a lot to do. I, school's getting ready to be over. You know, I'm a junior. I'm a senior. You know, I, I went to prom last night. Whatever the case may be, I got stuff to do. I got kids. I got a life. I got, you know, why should I take 10, 15 minutes to read the Bible? Because, like I said earlier, the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But what we also learned is that if faith cometh by hearing, so does fear. Right? Uh huh. Think about y'all. Remember uh, when CNN had the 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 death toll ticker on the bottom of the screen? Y'all remember that when when COVID was just starting out, and you'd be watching Anderson Cooper, and they got a ticker of how many people are dying every second. On what is that? That's a fear tactic, right? God says sometimes we confuse the facts with the truth. I gotta go. I gotta go. Sometimes we confuse facts with the truth. But God says, you can have the facts, but I am the truth. Yes, you can have the facts, but I am the truth. And the truth trumps the facts every time. The truth beats down the facts every time. And it's going to tell you, listen, the, the facts will say, listen, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. But there comes a moment when the truth says, and I don't got nothing else to say to you, okay? Because I'm letting you know it's not going to end like this. It's not going to be over like this. It will not be like this the rest of your day. Has anybody seen that video of Mike Tyson on the airplane? Did y'all see that? That was a couple weeks ago. Mike Tyson was on the airplane. The actual Mike Tyson with heavyweight champion of the world was on the airplane and this dude was trying to be fun. How many of y'all saw that? Okay? Okay, some of y'all sanctified. Y'all don't watch TV or nothing. Amen. So, 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 I'll give you the quick version. He was on the plane and this dude kept on messing with him, Jose. Kept on messing with him, you know, and I don't know what was wrong with this dude because this was the real Mike Tyson. And Mike Tyson was like, man, leave me alone. He said it in a different way, but I don't want to make fun of Mike Tyson. So I'm not going to do a Mike Tyson impression. If you're watching this, I did not do a Mike Tyson impression. This dude keep on messing with Mike Tyson. Keep on messing with him. So eventually, what did Mike Tyson do? He beat the dude down. Boom, 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 boom. And it was fast, too. I mean, it was like three seconds, and he hit him like six times. It was only because... The truth, when you're powerful, when you're more powerful than somebody else, he was saying, you're not going to keep on doing what you're doing, okay? I am more powerful than you, and if you keep on messing with me, i got to show you how much more powerful 
I am than you. And that is what God is doing in your life as he's breathing things to life. He's saying depression, I'm more powerful than depression. So yes, it's going to keep on knocking you, but I'm going to eventually stand up and I got to knock him out, okay? Uh -huh. I know your anxiety is strong, but keep on letting that anxiety mess with you. And the truth is that I'm more powerful than anxiety, so I'm going to give anxiety a three-piece. Google it if you don't know what that is, okay? Right? He's saying, yes, loneliness has been there, but loneliness is not going to beat you down, okay? Because I'm going to do something. Loneliness so bad, they're going to put it on World Star. Uh huh. That's what they say when somebody in a fight, they shout World Star. Because you got to watch it. And this is what's happening in your life. That's why there is a shaking and a moving. Because God is at work in your life. It's not over yet. And it's not going to end that way. If this word blessed you today, I want you to clap your hands and give it to Forgive me. Forgive me for going over my time. But here's what I.